2015, we met three amazing kids who lived in the world's largest refugee camp. Hi, my name is Ahmed. I am 16 years old. Ahmed loved the freedom of his bike. If I want to, to go from the end to the other, it will take maybe one hour on the bicycle. Ola was football crazy. Hello, my name is Ali. I am 12 years old. And Ali was a great teacher. Always do homework. They had to leave their homes in Syria because of the war there. They made it to Zatari refugee camp in Jordan, a country near the border with Syria. Everyone was safe in the camp, but their lives were on hold. One day I'm going to fly out of this camp. Now that they are two years older, we've come back to look for them. The day before we left the camp, we were excited to leave. But when the time came to say goodbye, I wanted to stay. To see how their lives have changed. I am also one of five million people who left Syria because of the war there. But my family managed to get out and we came to the UK. Remember Ali? Ali's classes for his friends were always packed. B, C, D, E, F, G. My name is Karim. This is my my. Flower, Two years on, Ali is now the new boy on the bicycle. I live in a Zatari camp and I'm 14 years old. And Ali would like us to meet someone new in his family. This is my new brother Majid, and this my father, and this uh, mother, and this my brother Hamza, and the brother Muhammad. Majid was born in the camp 18 months ago. When I get on my big bike, he wants to get on it with me. But he doesn't let me get close to his bike. With another baby, Ali's family decided to stay in the camp until it's safe to go home to Syria. At the camp in 2015, we met the striker and the girls' football team, Ola. While Ola and her brothers and sisters were in the camp, her dad managed to get to Germany so that he could give his children a better life. Now Ola and her family live in Germany too. Here is my sister Nora. My brother Balao. My dad. My mum and my little brother. <laughs> Ola's at school in Germany and she's made new friends with other refugees who have made it to Europe. We didn't know anything about school here. But I met three of the best teachers and their teaching is excellent. Good morning. Are you all well today? Ola has been here for about a year and her German is really good for such a short period of time. I have a lot of respect for her. When Ola lived in the camp, school was an attempt. They could only go for four hours a day, and there were so many girls in every class. 
School in Germany is a change for the better. And Österreich? Mm -hmm. I love my teachers. They are very supportive and treat us all equally. When the bombing started in their home in Syria, Ola's family had to walk many miles to the refugee camp in Jordan. Everything they owned had to be left behind in the desert, even her precious football. But she's making up for it now. I've improved a lot in football. In Jordan, I didn't play with boys, so it's been quite tricky. Ola is still football mad and she gets even more goals. Hi, my name is Ahmed. I am 16 years old. I am from Syria. Two years ago, Ahmed spent his time cycling around the camp whenever he could. I feel the same uh, feeling like him because he, he looks uh, from uh, up top and down and around him and he said, what is this? It's, it's only just a cage for him. He would like to fly away and be free. But he can't because he's in a cage right, right now. I'm this, this, in the same situation for him because I think I am in a cage in this camp. I don't have a, a chance or a, a space for me to fly and to just spinning my wings. <laughs> Recently, Ahmed and his family did just that. <laughs> a new house and a new life about 10 miles outside the camp. These are my family members. This is my little sister, Horhan. This is my brother, Khaled. This is my mom, and this is my father, Ibrahim. I'm going to show you my house from the inside. This is the guest room. And this is the kitchen over there. And this is my own room. This is my desk, where, where I study every day. It's so good here. This is a big change for the family. In the refugee camp, they lived in a storage container. Another day, another life. Passes by just like mine, it's not complicated. Do you ever wonder if the stars shine out for you? Ahmed had to sell his bike to help pay for the house move. So he now has to walk across the desert to his new school. Now I am going to my classroom to get my lessons. My first lesson is the English lesson. Starting a new school can be tough. I am the only Syrian student here. Even if we are all Arabs, that doesn't mean we have the same culture and the customs. Ahmed is a top class student. The flowers. But he misses his Syrian friends at the camp. But back in Zatari, I have my buddies. We used to go to the gym together and we used to ride our bicycles together. We go to the school together. We used to do everything together. We are the same brothers. We, we've gone through the same thing and the same crisis. And there is no difference between us. We are just like one big family. I miss you. I miss you. Ahmed may have a new house and school, but he doesn't have his old friends to go home with. And it's a long trek back. I have to work for one hour and a half to go, and one hour and a half to come back from school.
During the summer, the camp gets really hot and dusty. It's in the middle of a desert. Ali has been trying to keep his family cool. I invented this air conditioning unit. It's made from two engines, a fan and this remote control. To make cold air, I put ice in here. It's working. It's absolutely perfect. It's been a tough time for Ali and his family. They trekked across the desert from their home in Syria to Zatari refugee camp in Jordan. Even after living here for five years, his dad thinks it's the safest place for Ali and his brothers. I'm very pleased for my children to be here. Because in Syria, I would worry about them being killed. Here, there is education and everything they need. This morning, Ali is going with his mom to the hospital. Majid has injured himself at home. Yesterday, Majid grabbed a hammer and hit his fingers. It's not looking good. So we've come to the hospital. Majid is bandaged up, and while he's there, he gets a free health check too. Let's sway you. When Majid was born, I loved him very, very much. I love to take him out with me and play with him. Majid has changed my life a lot. Everything looks fine. There's no need to worry. Ali would do anything to protect his baby brother. In Germany, Ola and her family have received a parcel of warm clothes from relatives in the camp who are also facing a cold winter. <laughs> Hundreds of people die every year making the dangerous journey across the sea to reach European countries. Ola's cousin came to Germany like this with their grandmother and grandfather. Two boats set off that night, one for the Arab refugees and another for people coming from Africa. There were so, so many people. There were half foreigners, half Arabs. Arabs go on one boat and the foreigners on another. The boat driver was Arabic. It was so, so crowded. I was praying we would drown because people were sat on top of me. I was crying all the time. The other boat sunk and those people drowned. They died, but we survived. When we arrived at the shore, we were very happy. Everyone threw themselves into the sea. Ola's cousin and grandparents made it to Germany, followed by her dad, and were allowed to stay but Ola and the rest of the extended family were still in the camp in Jordan. Being separated was very hard. A year later, after missing her dad so much, Ola and her mom and brothers and sisters 
were reunited with him. It was a happy day for all the family. It was an unforgettable day. When I saw them at the airport, it was the most beautiful moment, just like the day they were born. <laughs> But Ola found leaving her other grandmother in the camp very hard, and now she calls her every week. At first, I didn't cry, and I held back my tears. I tried to be strong, but then I saw my grandma and started crying. I just couldn't help it. Even after his long trek across the desert from school, Ahmed's day is not finished. Well, I just came back from the school. I'm going to take a rest, and then I'm going to go to, the, to my work. Every night during exams, he revises for three hours. I'm going to study to 11, or sometimes 11 and a half p.m., and then I'm going to go to sleep and work up, wake up at 6 a.m. to study. It's a so tired thing to do. Every day, every day, every day. When he is not doing his exams, Ahmed has a job on a farm to help the family out. His dad is not allowed to work because he doesn't have a permit. In Syria, they were well off. But now, the family relies increasingly on Ahmed. Everyone knows the terrible things that are happening in Syria and all the destruction. Our home was bombed more than once. So we had to leave to save our children's lives. Life here is expensive, and this has an impact on Ahmed, as he is the oldest son in the family. Ahmed's job helps to pay for the household bills and food for everyone. <laughs> He is determined to do everything he can for his family. It's so important to me to make my mom and father so proud of me. As I promised them before, five years ago, before the war even, I told them I'm going to be the first in my class ever. And for each year I was the first, but this, need, this year it's the final one for the high school stage here in Jordan. So it's going to identify my destiny in the future. This morning, Ali is back at school in the camp. He goes every day and he still loves it. <laughs> But today, he has an exam, so the pressure is on. I'm nervous about my exams. I wonder what the questions will be. But I'm confident I'll be the best in class. The maths test is first, and then it's back to his favorite subject, English. All the teachers in the camp are Syrian too. Because adult refugees are not allowed to work in Jordan, they are volunteers. People in the world uh, experience or live different lifestyles. Different lifestyles. The teachers treat us so well and they don't shout at us. Because of this, we love to come to school. A very tough, a very difficult 
life. In Germany, it's exam time for Ulla too. And it's even tougher because she has to take them in a new language. I'm now studying German. To achieve my dream, I have to go to a school called a gymnasium, which is very hard to get into. I want to become an architect. And when we return to Syria, I will rebuild all the houses and make them beautiful. I will do drawings from my imagination. If she ever feels nervous, Ola returns to one of her most treasured positions, her graduation certificates from her first school in Syria. These certificates are important to me because even at nursery, I was one of the best students. She hid the certificates in her clothes as she fled across the desert to the refugee camp in Jordan. When I struggle at school, I look back at my success and it helps to motivate me. Ahmed is feeling the pressure as well. He has an important exam in a few days and he really needs to talk to his old friend at the camp, Mohammed. It's very early in the morning and uh, everybody's sleeping. I am so excited because I'm going to go to the Zateri refugee camp today to see my friends. This is the first time Ahmed has been back since he left two years ago. To leave our friends and our neighbors in Zateri camp, it's so hard for us because we know how do we live we are sharing the same history and we, we have the same customs and we have the same traditions. It's so difficult for us. Ahmed hasn't seen his best friend since he left. In my first year in Jordan, at the end I lost hope like many people. But uh, my friend Mohammed, he brings me back to hope because he told me don't lose your chance. Work hard on yourself and be what, what always you want to be. This part of the camp is where Ahmed used to live. He still has relatives here. Bit of a surprise. Okay, one of my cousins, he owned this supermarket. Let's see how I... Ahmed? <laughs> جدو <laughs> 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 عمي مايد شلونك شو اخبارك؟ معلمنا شو هذا يا ابن الحرام غير كمان حبيبي قلب ايش معلش؟ فاينلي احمد سبوتس محمد There's a special person in everyone's life and this one in my life his name Muhammad he's my old friend I had the moment when I lose the hope and say just the dreams can't be true but he's tell me no stand up and fight for your dreams come on let's roll rock and roll rock and roll no never let the command has going to get you no اكيد بس خلاص احسن نطلع يعني عم ظل المدارس الحكومية اللي بعمان أضمن شوي من هنا يعني هون بأي لحظة مثلا ممكن واحد يروح على سوريا وها أما برا يعني الجو يعني حلو في كهرباء و... العل إنه بس المواصلات يعني شوية ضعيفة بس إنه ماشي الأمور الحمد لله وأنا مرتاحين كويس كمان الحمد لله 
<laughs> Sometimes all it takes is kind words from a friend. It can make all the difference. It has been two years since I was on a bicycle. But now I am on a bicycle with my best friend Muhammad. I just uh, see my old friend and we were sharing our dreams and our thoughts. It was good to see him after two years. And we just decide the most important decision in our life. We are going to stay together and we are going to study together. Maybe a nuclear engineer or a doctor. I know that I'm only a refugee, but we need a chance to get the education and to make my dreams come true. Thousands of miles away in Germany, Ola dreams of being accepted in her new country. It's difficult at school because all my friends are Arab. But we are the ones who have to fit in. It's our duty to integrate. And Ali just wants a different world for his little brother. Majid hasn't seen Syria yet, and this is good. If he'd seen it, he would miss it and want to go back. Inshallah, when the war ends, we will all go home. And Majid will see Syria.